In today's video, I'll be showing you how to circuit bend a readily available VGA to composite video converter, the GBS8100. I have been wanting to cover the topic of circuit bending these cheap VGA to composite converters for a while now, but the brand new ones available on the market these days feature an all-in-one chip solution for the encoding and decoding, meaning they can't be modified in this way. I eventually stumbled across the GBS8100. It has all of the same circuitry as the older VGA to composite converters, and it can be found easily on Amazon and eBay. I have tried to make this project as accessible as possible so everything used here can be found on Amazon, I'll leave links to all of the parts used in the description below. This project is also great for anyone interested in the circuit bent Eddyroll V4 tutorial I recently completed, as it is essentially the same technology and provides many of the same effects, not to mention it's a lot cheaper if you mess up. So let's do a quick rundown of the core components. First off is of course the GBS8100 itself, this converter features a dynamic RAM chip that we will solder to for this project. Secondly is a composite to VGA converter. You can omit this component if you only want VGA and then composite out, but I personally want to have a composite input and output as that works better with my setup. This extra converter also gives us the ability to create a feedback loop, which is great as it also gives it standalone video simp like operation, like my other VGA converter based feedback devices. For the interface, I opted for some 4mm banana jacks and some momentary push buttons that can be patched into different effects. And for the enclosure, I use this nice little four part ABS box. This can be opted out for whatever you want to build it into though. Um, I also designed these nice little minimal panel graphics which can be printed out on a piece of paper like I did here. These will be available on the website. The first and most challenging part of this project is to solder to these tiny 0.8mm pitch SMD pins. To make this as easy as possible, I recommend using leaded solder, a flux pan, and thin solid core wire. I personally use this 28 gauge solid core wire. Some people like to use enamel coated copper wire for this sort of work, but I find this size works fine for me, and I can rely on the insulation a little bit more. What I do is use this thin solid core wire to solder to the IC pins, then I solder these wires to a section of Vero board that I can secure to the converter itself. That way the fragile connections I add won't move around and break off. I then use some standard ribbon cable to go from this Vero board to the connections themselves. This approach has saved me a lot of headaches in the past and is definitely worth the extra steps. So now we're taking a closer look at the GBS8100 itself. This is the RAM chip in question that we're going to solder all our wires to and I'll just show the pinout on screen now showing you all of the safe pins to connect to and all of the pins that you should avoid. Now to solder two pins this small using this wire, I don't actually trim the end of this wire at all, instead I use the solder iron to heat up the tip of it just to get the insulation to um, shrink back a tiny bit and tin that wire so we get essentially a, a millimeter or a little less of exposed copper that we can then solder to these little pins on this IC here. Now as I solder in these little wires it's worth mentioning that I'm going to be soldering to every single pin except for the power and grounds. That's simply so I can go through and search for the best pin combinations that result in the best effects. I'll provide documentation to these effect combinations on screen and on my website. Now this is an entirely optional modification, but since these converters feature a composite and S-video output that can be used at the same time, I like to use a 470 picofarad capacitor just to get a quick and dirty composite video out of this S-video output. Now that's particularly useful when using it in feedback loop mode, when you say want to use an external video processor to process that feedback loop, but need an additional video output to actually view the video signal. Now that we've soldered all the wires onto that RAM IC, we can now solder the ends of those onto the small section of perf board that we can then somehow join to the converter itself. I like to cut out a section small enough so I can actually super glue it to the existing VGA connectors. This turns out to be a really solid solution and doesn't actually interfere with any of the connections on board. Here I'm just making some cuts in the Vera board I'm using so I can accommodate all of the different connections I'm running to it. I'll then tin the ends of these little traces that I've made just so we can easily solder the wires from the converter and the ribbon cable that will run to the panel. 
I can unsolder all the wires in from the converter and glue this piece of herfboard in place and we've got nice secure connections. I won't go into too much detail on my enclosure build, but it did involve printing out some panel graphics on this nice adhesive paper. Um, I found this on Amazon, I'll leave a link to this in the description too. I uh, found it quite fun actually using this and being able to print off a design and put it straight down in the box. Plus it makes for nice accurate drill patterns instead of doing everything by hand. For anyone attempting this project themselves, I do recommend that you use a slightly larger enclosure. That being said, I will provide the printouts for the panel graphics I designed here and a simplified version of these panel graphics that feature some of the effects that building this one allowed me to discover. Now it's just a matter of soldering up all of the internal wiring harness. So first we'll start with the video signals and power and then last we will solder in all of the bend points that run to the SD RAM chip. I won't go into too much detail on the wiring process here, instead I'll provide detailed wiring diagrams that will provide plenty of information on how to get this done, including the points and where to solder on VGA connectors. Now for those who know of my original VGA converter video synth tutorial, I recommended using the included VGA cables but now I'd just recommend soldering directly to the boards as the cables you often get don't really adhere to any set colour code so it's really hard finding which wire is which in those cables. This will solve a lot of confusion and anybody that's been having any trouble with that project should find this really helpful. So after some time wiring you should have a really cool and capable digital video glitch effects processor as well as a nifty little feedback generator video synth kind of thing. Really similar to my original guide but now with a little bit of circuit bending edge. These little SD-RAM chips are found in all sorts of consumer video gear such as cameras, DVD players, plug and play video games but these little converters are the best example I've found of it in a standalone format where you can pass through video in real time and glitch it out. I was particularly happy to find the GBS AE100 on the market brand new and readily available as I've been using these cheap and cheerful converters in my video art and in home built video simps and stuff for quite a few years now and when I first was using them they all came with these separate RAM chips and encoders and then at one point they became obsolete. So it's really good to find that there's still a need for them in the market for them to be produced brand new as that means these are going to be readily available and cheap for quite some time now. And that makes it a really good basis for this sort of project because there's no rarity to it and if you end up breaking one it's not really the end of the world. Right, so that's about it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed watching. Until next time.